Hi and welcome to this tutorial on infrared spectroscopy. In this tutorial we're just going to have a look at amines. I've chose uh, four chloroaniline as an example, this molecule here. Uh, it's an aromatic amine, so it's, I mean, chemically it's slightly different um, to normal amines, but spectroscopically it should be alright. Um, one thing to note with this, we don't have any aliphatic CHs, which is really useful actually for this tutorial in particular. Because it, it clears all this region. So let's let's get cracking. We've also got this carbon chlorine bond because it's four chloroaniline and that's an M of the compound. Okay, so let's have a look at the spectrum. So we've got this peak here, and if you look at this one, see if I can exaggerate that a little bit. This is a not if you can see that very well, but this is a, an asymmetric stretch. So as this one's going out, this one's going in, and the vector's showing that in that direction, and the other vector should be showing it can't really see it very well but it's the other ones popping in there okay so that's an asymmetric stretch and that's coming at three four six four wave numbers the next one along another nice sharp peak is uh, for the symmetric stretch okay so they're both going in the NH protons are both moving in together in unison both in the same direction there two nice sharp bands um, I'd say med medium medium um, peak intensity there and then if we move down we've got some little minor peaks these are usually the overtones of, of the aromatic peaks so we'll, we'll leave them for now this is another one this is important actually this is the NH2 scissor bend now it's not showing up too well let's exaggerate there we are that's wonderful look at that nice scissor bend there and that's coming at let's get an exact figure for you don't worry about exact figures uh, that's coming about 16, 10, 16 or 3, something like that. The important thing is, if you've got an aliphatic compound with lots of CHs, CH2s and things like that, you know, a normal linear chain, or if you've got anything that's hydrogen bonded, then this region is going to be completely chock-a-blocked with information from those signals, and you won't see those nice um, NH um, stretches, either the, uh, the asymmetric or the symmetric stretch. So the first thing you should be looking for, for a primary amine, which is capable of doing this scissor bend, is look for a peak here at 1600, something like that. Okay. The next one along, so that's really useful. Um, so the next one along is just the um, stretches there. You can't really see it very well, but this is, these are the bit of the stretches uh, for the double bonds and things like that. We've got some nice rocking going on here with the whole molecule as um, as it, it's all involved in in that vibrational frequency. Next one here, we've got some strange things going on. We've got we've got what looks like some kind of symmetric stretch with the uh, the uh, ortho protons. And if you're not too familiar with ortho, it just means the next one along here. And let's see if we can get that, exaggerate that again. It's a little bit better. And they're anti-symmetric with them. Again, these these kind of things you can't really predict. You need to calculate these, and, and these have all been calculated with um, some molecular like orbital program, like MORPAC or something like that. Uh, again, we've got this strange twisting um, motion there for that for that um, frequency. And these are all in the fingerprint region, and, and they're in the fingerprint region for a good reason, because they're very unique to this particular molecule. And like I say, it's hard to predict. You can predict the the NH bend, you yeah, know, that's pretty pretty easy to predict. You can predict the symmetric and, and anti-symmetric or asymmetric stretches there. But these kind of things get a bit confusing, and you're not expected to be able to predict that, to be honest. Sometimes you might be expected to know about these out of plane bends. So if you notice this is it's like a an asymmetric out of out of plane from the benzene ring, the CHs go up and down like that. One thing you should note here, but it isn't actually showing up. Um it's showing up here as a an NH um an NH wiggle there. Okay. But in this region here, it can be quite weak sometimes. But in this region here, you should actually see a carbon-chlorine stretch. Okay, 
So that's between 800 and 600 wave numbers is where you'd expect to see uh, some some kind of carbon halogen um, a stretching frequency but it's not actually showing up in this particular example that's where I would look for this kind of frequency and that's quite good actually because this area is quite free as well the finger fingerprint region is uh, quite crowded sometimes this region here where you get your carbonyls and your NH bends this is quite less crowded I'd say um, and this region depending on the size of the molecule can be quite crowded so there's just things to look out for but I'm quite happy that we've now got the uh, symmetric um, so that's anti-symmetric or asymmetric stretch symmetric stretch there for the NH that's what I was looking for for this tutorial and we've also got this nice little scissor bend there so that's an introduction to infrared spectroscopy for amines um, and do look out for the other um, tutorials and there's uh, the other tutorial on the theory behind um, infrared spectroscopy as well. So that's it for now. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.